the new Cyber Frontier, bringing you the latest news on the local Colorado economy and initiatives that focus on the development of cybersecurity economics. You don't have to be a computer or cybersecurity expert to get plugged in. Your host, Chris Gorog, brings it straightforward, asks the tough questions, and brings the cyber world to a level of understanding for everyone. Chris is personable and opens up with our guests on the issues we all would like to see addressed. You can find us on the web at www.newcyberfrontier.com. Now join our host as he introduces the topic for today's New Cyber Frontier. Hello, I'm Dr. Wanda with the New Cyber Frontier, and today we're focusing on women in cybersecurity, a very exciting topic. Our first guest is Major Crystal Bolda. And she is a team lead for Cyber Vulnerability Assessment, and her area is Critical Infrastructure. Crystal, tell us about your background. Um, I joined the Army back in 1997 as an enlisted service member as what was then called a Study for Bravo, which is an information systems analyst and operator. Um, I did that position, which is more like a help desk operator, um, for about nine years, and then I enrolled in the Army's program, Green to Gold, where I pursued my degree in computer science and got commissioned as a signal officer. Um, in 2010, I once again applied for a program as a functional area to become what I do today, which is a 26 Bravo and information systems engineer. So I've been doing this position for the past nine years. In my current role, I am a team lead for Cyber Vulnerability Assessment Team, which is responsible for taking a look at the vulnerabilities that could potentially affect um, the nation's critical infrastructure. Very interesting. What employment experiences have shaped your business's core values? What has employment? Yeah, what employment experiences have shaped your businesses or your personal values in what you do? So I think it's, we're starting to understand that the way that people operate these days have drastically changed and it's not the typical way of how we see things operating. We don't have to be physically there to have an effect on things. So I think we're taking a step back and looking at how people are now automating everything and how we wanna make things much easier and really how the internet has come to change how we operate day to day. So, you know, the military is also doing that as well. So how can people leverage the use of the internet and all these internet of things, devices and so forth. So we're taking a look at that of how is that how can that be leveraged to essentially affect what all of us do and how we operate? Thank you. Can you discuss any short and or long range goals that you have for yourself at this point in your career? Um, for right now, this current mission of doing the assessments on the vulnerabilities um, of critical infrastructure is my main focus. Um, we have missions almost every week going out. So I find that to be extremely important. So I'm, I'm truly focusing on that right now and learning everything I can about operational technology, um, how the different industries do things and how we can incorporate cyber. So right now my short-term goal is just to really become SME in that field. But overall, what I would like, what I see myself doing once I potentially retire from the military next year is um, with the experience that I've had over the past 22 years now, is I would really love to go out and consult with corporations that maybe don't look to their left and right and look at their brother and sister corporations and see how they operate and maybe leverage my experience of things I've seen done very well and things I've seen done very poorly and help bring that that awareness to cybersecurity and you know the posture within their corporations. So hopefully one day I would like to potentially have my own consulting business to where I can leverage everything that the army has, you know, taught me over these years. Awesome. What quality should someone in this industry possess? Don't be afraid to fail. 
Um, absolutely. Everything we do is trial and error. Um, a lot of people I feel are shy away from what we do is because of the fact that you feel like they don't know enough. But, you know, again, I've been doing this for 22 years and I learn something new every single day, especially, you know, I'm in my 40s at this point, but this kid that just joined the army yesterday, they know a lot more than what I know because they grew up with the internet. So and we're gonna still- we're gonna have you hold that thought. We're gonna take a break for our sponsors and we will be right back. Cyber Resilience Institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. I'd like you to continue where we left off in discussing the quality someone in this industry possesses. And um, you started out with, don't be afraid to fail. Oh, absolutely. Um, Everything is, like I said, trial and error. Um, You only learn by failing. If you only, if you stay within your comfort zone, you're never going to expand and become that subject matter expert. So lean on, you know, you people to your left and right, make friends. I mean, a lot of this is really is social engineering, you know, be, I know a lot of us are introverts and we like to keep to ourselves, but sometimes step outside of your comfort zone, talk to those, talk to people that you wouldn't normally talk to. So, and you definitely have to be a team player because you're never going to know everything. So don't be afraid to fail talk to people and just be a team player and never stop learning. I think that's the biggest is you absolutely, no matter how old you get, you know, I tell my kids all the time, you know, you see mommy studying and, you know, mommy's in her forties and you're eight years old. So I'm studying just like you are. So that continuous learning is huge in this field. Awesome. Is there anything you'd like to share with our listening audience in closing? So for myself, if I could bring awareness to anything, I would, I would really encourage people to start looking at cybersecurity just out of the typical norm of where you think IT. Let's start looking at how vulnerabilities and how nowadays we're, we're automating everything, um, how, how that affects the security posture of our power grid, of our water, of our you know, pharmaceuticals that half of them aren't even developed within the U.S. So how are those vulnerabilities could have to affect the well-being of um, all the various industries? Crystal, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. have enjoyed this episode of New Cyber Frontier. Remember to get involved. Often we think that someone else will handle privacy and security in the virtual world, but you are the only one truly in command of your virtual fate. Join our mailing list so we can keep you informed of breaking news and new releases. If you have an idea, if you have a question that you would like to hear answered, or if you want to get involved with our efforts, reach out to us at newcyberfrontier.com. We also encourage you to visit our sponsors' links as they are the ones that really make this show possible. I want to thank each of you for supporting the show, and we look forward to seeing you back for the next episode of New Cyber Frontier.